Saturday the 4th of December, the first weekend of December, and no doubt our lives are beginning to get ever more busy as the days go on. An opening sentence, awaken us, Lord, to your love, your light, and your leading. Amen. Our readings are from Isaiah chapter 29, verses 15 to 24, and Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 to 52. We're now really getting into the season of Advent, a time when we focus on our Lord's coming. The purple stone, which I'll be wearing in church tomorrow, has two sides to it. One side is for use in Advent, and the reverse side in Lent. On the Advent side, you'll note that the left-hand part of it is a depiction of Bethlehem, and the right-hand side an image of what the new heaven might be like. For much of December, we focus on Christmas. And I think that society in general, and not the church, does this. Although for many, Christmas is in fact not a celebration of Jesus' birth. That quite well have got lost in the wider celebration of Christmas time. For these people, their focus might be on the works party or arrangements to visit relatives, the sharing of presents or celebrating in general rather than focusing on Jesus. But even within the church, I think that we spend far more time thinking about Jesus' first coming during the season of Advent and the run-up to Christmas, rather than his future second coming. Maybe this is because we enjoy thinking of the baby at Bethlehem, with the linked Christmas carols and nativity plays. But also, perhaps, we find the second coming a much more difficult message to talk about when Jesus comes in glory as King and Judge. But this message is there in the Bible and is God's truth. We are told about it because we need to respond to this future event, an event which no one knows when it will happen. We are told about it, so we have that chance to put our lives in order, to live in a God-inspired way. There's no place for pulling the wool over God's eyes, like the people tried to do in Isaiah's time. And in our Matthew reading, Jesus talks about sorting. We don't know the exact criteria for this sorting, but what we do know is that we can't go far wrong if we follow Jesus' example and we do his work. And perhaps that should be one of our focuses this coming uh, during this Advent season. How can we better do Jesus' will? and follow his example. Our next prayer. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us as we focus on his first coming as a baby, as Emmanuel, God with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by him throughout our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and for today's prayer points. Let's pray that in the run-up to Christmas, we do give time and space to God. Let's pray that people behave responsibly towards others. And let's pray for all who are ill at this time. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I was talking about wearing my Advent stole tomorrow and just a reminder of our service times that we will be worshipping here at St. Aidan's at uh, 9.30 and 11 o'clock tomorrow morning and that St. Luke's will be worshipping within St. Wilfrid's Academy at 11 o'clock in the morning but there is also an evening carol service which some of you might like to attend and uh, we'll put up uh, a post of details of timings for this. Our blessing. The Lord give you grace and make you to be numbered with his saints in their glory which is everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit 